Hey, what's up everybody? So today I'm headed to a customer's house because he's having some severe coral loss. Now I talked with Tommy of Tank Nitions and um, he's found in the tank that there are some LPS eating flatworms in there. So he sent me to do a, a flatworm treatment. Now there, also, there is also some other pests and other um, things that are happening in the tank. So uh, this will be my first time going and looking at the tank since, um, since the coral has been struggling. So I'm gonna go ahead and go inside right now and let's kind of see what we're looking at and let's do our treatment uh, for the flatworms as well. All right, so here we are. And just by uh, looking at the tank right now, I can tell something's off. The corals do look stressed. And um, I'm gonna take a closer look right now, but definitely something's going on here. So uh, I do see some flatworms. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up for that treatment right now. But yeah, the, the tank definitely does not look like it uh, used to. So here's my flatworm exit uh, by Salifert. I'm gonna go ahead and dose this now and we'll see how the tank reacts. Now we got the medicine in the tank and you can see on the flesh of that hammer coral, that little brown spot waving around, uh, that's a flatworm reacting to the medication. So you can see the nice healthy tissue, the white area right there. And you can see where it turns to more of the stony base, the skeletal base. And if you look kind of to your left, um, where is that? That one right there, you can see a little brown spot there. That's a flatworm. And he's kind of cruising all along that healthy tissue. There's two of them actually right there. You can see them moving up. Oh, I see multiple. So you can see a bunch of them moving. Now I put the medication in and they're starting to get bothered by it. But these guys are really, really resilient to uh, this, this treatment. Yeah, the more I'm looking now, you can see a bunch of them gliding along there on that healthy tissue. Unfortunately, this torch coral was doing great, but you can start to see where it's receding back. And they're just moving like crazy on there. That little brown, see if you look to your left there on the one hammer, hammer coral head, he's sliding along there. Oh, there goes another one right behind him. On that one right there, you can see. Keep your eye on that. You see him sliding around there, moving. He's, usually they don't move like that. It's the medicine that's irritating them. Let's look for some more on other euphilia corals. Coral. Oh, as I speak, so there's, an, there's one right there gliding along really fast. Oh, there's another one right there on the mushroom. So they're, the medicines definitely have an effect, but they're not floating, they're not breaking off. They're just irritated. So I'm gonna up the dose here in a second. A lot of the flatworms love hanging out on these mushroom corals. That's usually where you can see them. You see one sliding through right there. Look at that. Tons of them, look at that. Two of them right there. So here we have a hammer coral, nice healthy, healthy tissue underneath there. But two heads that were lost. So let's check this out. This is a Blastomuso that is, I mean, it's the color on it's great. It's big, it's fluffy. It's a sign of a, a very healthy coral right now. Um, you wouldn't know that there's anything going on in this tank. However, if we look right beneath that healthy Blasto, underneath there's two more colonies of Blastos right there that have just been completely just torn apart. And there's just, all that's left is just skeleton right now. So you can see this big wall, Euphelia, not looking very healthy. You can see right here, and right here it's peeling away from its actual skeleton. It's tucked in, it's not out, and it's starting to peel away. This logo, this is what a healthy logo looks like. And then look at this one, you can start to see the recession all around the base there. Again, a healthy little bow, and this head's starting to go. You feel ya, the heads are gone. This is a A can that's keeping it together, but you can see it's a little bit tight, starting to get stressed out. This is what an A can should look like, nice and fluffy and big like that. You can see some stress happening right here, which will eventually lead to, these are newer, to something like this. 
right here where you start to see the head starting to stress right here and then it start to missing spots so it's a slow thing so you can see usually it's not a water chemistry issue because you can see the ones that aren't being messed with are completely big and healthy and then where they start to get messed with it's like an erosion and this was a whole colony all right there and then slowly it's eroded back now and this is what you're left with again stressed a can right here heads are small this one's getting hit hard but if you look towards the back you can see that back there also used to be a can it's, uh, it's gone Duncan coral it's supposed to be big out and fluffy heads are starting to stay in they're looking definitely bothered Duncan's for as much as people say they're a hardy coral when something's wrong with your tank, they usually, you see it first with these guys. Also, if you look on the overflow right there, you can see all the Asterina starfish that are uh, kind of accumulated in this tank. There's a ton of them in here. So uh, we're also going to be dealing with that uh, as well. So there's a lot going on right now. Now, by first glance, you look at the tank, you think everything's all good. But, you know, you got some invasive algae here. You got some lettuce algae there, which is kind of whatever. There's some stuff that'll eat that. No big deal. We're going to take care of that today. Uh, but, you know, the torch coral still look good. If you didn't know what was in this tank, you would think that that was a healthy torch coral. If you look closer, you can see the remitted snails right there. Those are commonly found on euphelia coral. Remitted snails are a common pest that are found on uh, euphelia coral for whatever reason. And those, uh, those can be a real nuisance uh, also. Again, not a water chemistry issue. Look at this acro. It's literally encrusting onto the frag plug. And it's, it's just taking off. It's doing really well. This whole tank was just loaded completely up with coral. And it really pains me to see uh, such a beautiful tank at one time have to go through this. Uh, I mean, I, I, as I keep, I'm still going through here looking at all the recession and issues and death. And it just is a constant reminder to me to always, you know, quarantine my coral, to always try to find a reputable area to buy coral from. Because uh, this is a lot of money that's in this tank. I mean, anybody knows anything about coral. I mean, there's, there's thousands of dollars in this tank. And it just takes, you know, one slip up to lose it all not worth it. Scully's for the most part look pretty good. Looks like there's a dead uh, Fabia or something, Blasto or something, I'm not sure. But then again, you have another SPS coral that is encrusting right there. So there are no fish in here that could be the culprit because you just have clownfish, you got a little neon goby right there, uh, a little blenny, a little dragon egg right there. Uh, dotty back, six line wrasse. There's nothing in here that would be nipping or bothering these corals at all. So, um, I'm definitely, I'm pretty sure. I mean, there's a there's a red hot fish that's back there in the corner. There's nothing here in this tank that would be bothering the coral. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a water change right now. I got the carbon going. So I'll throw some carbon in there also to help with whatever toxins those flatworms will be releasing when they die. This is a very, very resilient strain of flatworms. This uh, medication is irritating them, but they're not coming, they're not dislodging or floating in the surface like you see a lot of times. Um, I've even waited 30 minutes and then I've added more and they're just, they're, they're, they're moving around a lot, but they're not peeling back and floating which is um, unfortunate, uh, but we'll keep doing the treatment and uh, we'll come back another two weeks and, and hit it again. Now this water change will be about 50% uh, or so, 40 to 50%. And that's about as much as I'll go right now. I got the handful of snails right here. I'm gonna place them exactly where they need to be. Get everybody on there. So they know exactly what to do. This is your job, guys. 
enjoy buffet. Hopefully they uh, they respond to this. Also got some emerald crabs we're gonna put here too. Good example of pilot bailout. Now when using the flatworm treatment, you wanna make sure you put a fresh carbon in the tank. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one right there in a nice flow area to help with any of the toxins that are released. So after uh, being here for a bit and looking at the tank, there's a bunch of things that it could be. There's a real danger of getting corals online. There's a real danger of getting uh, corals from a place that uh, you're not sure if they quarantine or what their quarantine protocol is. And it's a risk you have to take. Now, even dipping a coral doesn't mean that it's gonna be 100% clean. Corals, just like fish, have to go through a quarantine process. It's critical because even though you dip it in whatever coral dip that's on there, whatever coral dip you have, there's eggs, there's other things that are resilient to these dips that can stay on the coral still. Got some emerald crabs, let's go ahead and put them in. Oh, oh, oh. Where are you going? Put them in the same spot, let's see if they'll stay. There you go buddy, have a blast. He's pinching me. All right, all right, all right. Here you go, go with your buddy, go with your friend. Is he already eating? No, no way. Yeah. Already going to town, but well, that was fast. More vermitted, vermitted snails down here. You can see the little slime coat that they have. Cause I did the water change. They can sense that there's food in the water and they're putting out the little catchers. There's a little starfish putting his hands out too. I think something good's gonna happen. We did everything we needed to do today. We'll be back in two weeks. So some takeaways that I have from doing this job is there are some problems that you can manage like Aptasia, some forms of flatworms, there's some things that, that you know, algaes don't really worry me. You can find a way to, to solve those and cure those and, and manage them to a point where they're not um, too detrimental to the tank's overall health. But when you get certain um, critters in there, certain pests in there, it, it, you can try to find a balance and you can manage them for a little bit. But every so often you run, you run up against something that you just can't fix or get rid of. And unfortunately, this could possibly be one of those situations. Now we're gonna look for every possible um, scenario, every possible thing to treat this tank and to get it to where it needs to be and manage it the best we can. But a lot of times, and it's happened to me personally, I know this, you just gotta scrap everything and start over. And I know that's not what the customer wants to hear. I know that's not what anybody wants to hear, but now sometimes it be like that. So my final word with all this is if you're going to spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on coral, spend the extra money and get a 20 gallon tank and use it as a quarantine setup. It's so worth it. You'll save yourself so many headaches. You can observe the coral for, for a while and if anything goes wrong, it happens in there, not in your display. You can deal with it in there, not in your display and you save yourself so much money in the long run. All right, I don't mean to be like a, a big downer here, guys. Um, I really do hope this was helpful uh, in any way possible. So you guys have a good one and I'll keep you posted on this tank and uh, I'm off to the next job. See you later.